Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're joined by a team. We have Diane Wallace, who is my wife. Diane is a commercial people and product photographer, and she also shoots animals in need for the Arizona Humane Society and other organizations, as well as Aaron Marcus, who's a wardrobe stylist. Diane and Aaron have been working together for years at Snap Factory. So we're joining them on set uh, just after one of their latest shoots. We're gonna talk to them about all kinds of things about how it is to work together as a team. So let's get to it. Here's Diane Wallace and Aaron Marcus. Hey everybody, well we're on the set finally. Here we are with Diane Wallace, my lovely wife, our dog Cody, and Erin Marcus, who's a wardrobe stylist and she's part of the creative team here at Snap Factory. So uh, tell us a little bit about this set and why we're here. Um, this set uh, I built recently, we were doing some personal work for my portfolio, and, uh, and this is the set. We and Cody shoot. here is just Cody, saying that? Cody, yes, he was actually ended up in this, this shoot, so he, uh, he's really, oh, he likes this, huh? this rug. Okay. <laughs> he's such a cute dog. Okay, well, we're going to talk about why Cody's here in a little bit, but first of all, you guys have worked together for years and years and years, right? Yes. yes. Okay, um, and I've worked together with these guys for years as well, but you worked together so many years. How do you go from, uh, this set was a concept shoot for you, mm -hmm. from the things that are in your brain to having Aaron pull, uh, you know, the wardrobe for this, and you made some wardrobe for this, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that creative process and the pre-production work that you did. Um, well, the idea was inspired by some other magazine shoots that I had seen. Um, and I sat down with Aaron. I had some broader ideas of I wanted layers of light and shadow with lots of texture. I wanted it to feel very rich, but I also wanted the overall look to be very dark. So I started by giving Aaron those details. Um, and then we sat down in a bookshop and looked at magazines and started pulling different ideas to that really examined, okay, I'm talking about this when I say texture, you know, and, and rich, rich looking more like this ad or this just to give her a visual idea of what I was talking about. And so about. do you look at those and look at colors? And yeah, and the more questions I ask, the more it finalizes what exactly we're looking for. And then how do you get the wardrobe for the shoot? Do you make it, pull it? I mean, how does that happen? A little combination of everything. I look around for everything. I don't like to focus in one spot and limit myself. Um, I usually call for something that's going to go to a magazine, get a pull letter, um, contact. So tell us what that is, because a lot of our viewers, they don't know what a pull letter is. So what is a pull letter and how does that work? A uh, pull letter um, usually happens with the um, process of going through a magazine or a magazine shoot. Um, you contact probably the marketing rep of that office and um, ask for permission. You usually have to have a credit card, insurance, um, and previous work. They like to know that you've been doing And then this what do you do with the pull letter? Um, you basically then have permission. You let them know what you're looking for and how much. Then you have permission to go in that day or the day before go pick up some clothes and uh, you're in charge of making sure everything comes back perfectly. <laughs> so where do you get the clothes though? You get them from department stores? Um, well this, this shoe I got it from Dillard's Yes. Okay. and um, then bring them back the next day in perfect condition. Sweet. So you have a magazine shoot or something you're doing mm -hmm. and you have insurance. You get a letter that says we, we yes. want to pull from your store. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the store. They say okay. You get a few thousand dollars worth of clothes. Yes. You take mm -hmm. them home. You shoot in them. And you take them back. Mm -hmm. and it, I think it's definitely more helpful too when you have a relationship with the stores, with the people there. Erin is a professional, she does this all the time, so she does know those people, so they yeah. trust her and mm -hmm. they let her. I think they give her a lot more flexibility than if somebody brand new was to walk in that they don't know. So, so for somebody that's just starting out in photography, um, they've never used a pull letter, they don't even know what it is. Uh, how do you write one? Where do, you, do you find these online? I mean, where do you get a pull letter from? You can definitely find a template online, um, and it really helps uh, to have background history of you doing this for a little while. They're not going to trust mm -hmm. somebody right off the bat, and a credit card to at least be able to cover the amount that you're pulling. Right, and so the insurance, now you yes. have insurance. We do. We keep a standard million dollar policy in our studio, and it does cover all of that. So. You know, just a million bucks case, sounds like a lot. Is that it's, standard or what? Is yeah, it's standard. It's standard. It's really not when you think about the amount of equipment that you have, especially, you know, we're in the studio, we're pretty safe here. But if you're out on location, the people, the resources that are invested in making something like this happen. And we've pulled in the past as much as $25,000 $25, worth of wardrobe. 
So once you guys have things on the same page, um, how do you get models? Do you uh, work together for casting calls? Do you go to agencies together? Do you decide? I mean, how do you know who you want to shoot with? Because obviously that impacts wardrobe. Yes. It definitely does. Yes. Um, it, we do it a number of different ways. For this particular shoot, um, you know, it's summer in Phoenix. A lot of models are out of town right now. So that is a challenge for us in the summer. Um, we happen to know um, one of our models, Gwen, and she is an agency model who was available. And so I just called her and said, please tell me you're in town. <laughs> I really wanted to shoot with her. Um, and our other model I actually found online. Um, she's an unsigned model. She, this was her very first shoot. Um, but she had a great look and I did bring them in and test with them first. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that. And we'll talk a little bit about um, signed model versus unsigned models. And you can tell, by the way, we're in a, an active industrial right. studio because there's lots of noises and AC and trucks <laughs> and things. Um, so you're actually in an industrial park. That's what this we studio are. is, right? Yeah. Um, and so maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. But back to the models. Yep. So you worked with a signed model and an unsigned model. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of using, first of all, a signed model? Um, signed models tend to be a lot more reliable. Um, you know, if you have a shoot and somebody, a model doesn't show up for a shoot, you can call the agency and say, send me somebody quick because this person isn't right. showing up, I can't reach her or whatever. Um, so that's a really nice backup to have. But also they, they do a lot more work, they get sent out a lot more regularly and so they have, tend to have more experience in the studio. Um, they keep their bodies in the right shape, they're, they're more toned, they just, they know what to expect coming in. There's a little bit of a vetting process that you have to you know, yeah. know something before you're signed, and if you're not keeping up, then boom, you're out. Well, plus they usually have a good variety of photos when you're picking a model. They have headshots, they have body shots, side shots, everything you need right. to know when you're looking for right. somebody. Okay, and then an unsigned model. What's, why would you ever go with an unsigned yeah, model? an unsigned model is, it is taking a chance, I'm, I'll be honest. Um, but she had a great look. Um, she was tall enough. I really needed somebody who was as tall as Gwen. So Gwen is five foot ten, and a lot of the other models who I was finding who were available weren't nearly as tall, which would have thrown off when I had them on set together. Um, and so the model we ended up using was five eleven, so that worked great. Um, but she was available. She took direction really well. But like I said, I did test with her first because I wanted to make sure she could take direction. I wanted to make sure she wasn't just going to completely fall apart on me right. at the shoot. So. Now financially though, there has to be a difference between signed and unsigned models. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, signed models, the agency usually sets a rate for them. So, right. um, and unsigned models you can negotiate or, or whatever. So um, let's again talk about wardrobe a little bit. So you have the model, you've selected those models. Um, where do you go from there? You take measurements? I mean, how do you know what to pull? Um, well, if they're a signed model, they have measurements on their sites and their comp cards, which is very helpful. Um, if they're an unsigned model, and it's still good to check either way, just in yeah, case, yeah. because people can change. Um, and if they're an unsigned model, I do take measurements, um, shoe sizes, um, dress sizes, and whatnot. And then from there, um, I either decide to make some stuff. I usually like to have a little bit of stuff that I made included. Um, right. Even if I do pull. I know this is a little bit of a departure for you in the way you normally yeah. light things. In what way is it different? Us well, usually when I'm in the studio, I tend to shoot a very commercial look. That's more of what I do. Even my fashion stuff tends to look more like fashion for a catalog as opposed to, you know, a Vogue layout. So um, I use a lot more light. I, it's much brighter. I often shoot on a white background because we really get the clothes to pop and the jewelry to pop. And mm -hmm. especially when Erin makes stuff, I love to be able to show that off. So I like to <laughs> to be able to really see right. it. I love the clothes and I want to see them. So going really dark and shadowy, just that whole style was is definitely pushing my my personal boundaries. So uh, it was really curious why you have Cody in this shot as well. So you can see some pictures here of the shot that was taken on the scene. Right. And there's little Cody in the shot. <laughs> yeah, he's in a couple actually. So why did um, you do that? You know, I, well I love Cody. He's with me almost all the time. He's my shadow. Um, but he 
is great at photography. <laughs> He's a great model, actually. He loves to be a star. He, yeah, he does. He loves. <laughs> he doesn't mind the lighting at all. Um, he loves to be with people. And if I'm working and ignoring him, he goes to find the next closest person who might be available to pet him. And so during our shoot, that was the model sitting on this bench. He just walked right over and sat on the rug, which he claimed as soon as I purchased. Um, mm -hmm. And so he thinks it's his rug, and there were models sitting on it. So. Who better than to pet him? So he went right over and sat. So was it planned that you were going to have him in there? Or no. Or just sort of when they no, test? No, but he blends, and so that works. So he fits <laughs> the color scheme, and it sort of worked, and so... It just worked, and I said, you know, let's just leave him there. He looks great, and and he did. He actually sat for a number of... Right place. <laughs> right place, right time. And... So what about your other animal photography? Because you yeah. uh, volunteer at the Arizona Humane Society. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, great photography is so important to animals looking for homes. Um, the adoption rates really skyrocket, especially for animals who are harder to find homes for, like um, pit bulls or black animals. You can't see their faces online, and people look online, they want to be able to really see what the animals look like and kind of fall in love with them. And that's what motivates people a lot of times to go down for a particular animal. So older dogs, you know, they're so lovable and they have so much love to give and they're such good companions. So um, a great photograph, we've seen the numbers skyrocket. It really makes such a big difference to them. Well, there you have it, Diane Wallace and Aaron Marcus. That was a really a lot of fun to be on set this week. Well, remember, if you have questions about photography, photography-related gear, or if you have a suggestion for a photographer you'd like to see on how they do that, please send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.